Hello there, how's it going? Welcome back to the Knack to Looking channel. This is The Inner Sanctum. Um, this is the first episode of The Inner Sanctum for 2024, but uh, tragically it is, it's already April, so uh, if you uh, have been missing me, I do apologize. There's been uh, a lot going on behind the scenes, um, both, you know, with my music, uh, the record label, and uh, just my personal life too. Been going through some uh, some changes, I guess you could say, and uh, you know, it's been a lot of stuff going on, but no nothing bad, nothing bad, just, you know, life. So, um, uh, I haven't, you know, in the past several months really bought a lot of stuff, you know, as far as like post-industrial music, well really as far as music in general is concerned, I really, really reeled it in and uh, been uh, just, you know, um, enjoying the music I have or just, you know, not only really buying what I feel like I really need or something like that, I guess. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, I, I, I Basically, I've just been an, a responsible adult uh, for a change. But, uh, <laughs> so, well, with that being said, um, about a month ago, um, a record label, which you may know from Poland, uh, that, is called, that is called Fluttering Dragon Records. So, Fluttering Dragon Records is a Polish uh, dark ambient post-industrial record label. The label originally started in, I want to say it was 1994. They originally started out putting out like some metal releases, then went more into dark ambient post-industrial direction. Um, and the label went from, I think the label went for about 12 years altogether, from 94 to 2006. I should have rehearsed this better. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> and then sometime in 2006, the label went under, or just um, the guy that runs the label decided he didn't want to do it anymore. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't ask those kind of questions. But, um, either late last year or early 2024, the label came back. Yes. Um, with some new releases, as well as making the almost the entire back catalog uh, available again. I mean, at least digitally speaking, it's all on Bandcamp. And uh, this is what actually really provoked me to make an order was that uh, um, the record label owner um, from Flutter and Dragon, he was offering free shipping from Poland, and I'm like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity because, like, let's let. I mean, if you've bought anything overseas lately, you know, like, that shipping's like in that fifteen to twenty dollar range usually. So I, I wasn't gonna pass it up, and there was so much cool stuff there. I really, you know, just like, in retrospect, wish I would have bought more stuff, but uh, I got some really cool items, and that is at least part of what I'm gonna share with you today. There may be a few others, so uh, we'll see how this goes. I haven't done this in a while, but anyway, let's get into it. This is the inner sanctum. All right then. So up first is Iltfrost and their second album, Nathaniel. So Iltfrost is a project I first came across, um, as far as I can remember, via Napster back, uh, what are we thinking, it was about 24 years ago that Napster caused all the, the file sharing drama? Yeah, I guess I suppose it was. We're, we're all getting old, aren't we? Um, so yeah, I came across Ildefrost while uh, <laughs> searching for black metal songs from the black metal project, Ild Yarn. Yeah. Um, so Ildefrost is an interesting band because uh, back in 1994 when, it, uh, when their first album, Autumn Departure, came out, which I have here, um, this was the first non-Swedish band to be signed to Cold Man Industry, these guys uh, being uh, from Norway. Uh, <clears throat> um, that's a very important thing, too, because um, I think when Cold Man Industry started, they had a very sort of um, elitist attitude in that they just wanted Swedish industrial on the label, and I, my, I, I could not be, I mean, I might not be exactly correct in, by saying they're elitist, but that's my perception of the things, at least, because, like, because this came out in 1994 and Cold Man Industry had already been around for like, what, seven or eight years at that point? So I, I think it was sort of an elitist thing where they were just like, we just want Swedish industrial bands. So, and then, I, I don't know, I guess Roger just uh, gave in and was like, well, well, let's see, let's try to sign someone else and see what happens. And 
as we have now seen, for uh, 30 years later, no one died from signing non-Swedish uh, uh, post-industrial bands to the label. Well, the label's gone, so what does it matter? But anyway, anyway, I'm droning on here. So anyway, Nathaniel, um, their second album, originally released in 1997, um, originally by Coldman Industry. This, however, was reissued shortly thereafter by Fluttering Dragon Records. Um, if you never heard Ill Frost, um, hmm, how would you describe this band? When I listen to this, I hear I hear traces of like dark ambient, dark wave. Neoclassical, and of course, since we now have a fun little term to define it, I definitely hear uh, Dungeon Synth in here too. Although, I'm sure if you uh, ask the creator of this if this is Dungeon Synth, they may not agree. Um, I don't know. I've never really reached out to the, the Dungeon Synth community to see how they feel about it, whether or not this is Dungeon Synth either, but there's, there's, there's definitely some DS stuff going on here. Um, there's lots of vocals, they're both spoken, and then there's some more sort of screamy black metal vocals, which is interesting because uh, one of the guys from this project, um, he was in a black metal band back in like uh, 92 or 93, he put out like a demo or two, I can't think of the name of the band right now. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, what I really like about these old, uh, I guess for lack of any better term, uh, you know, keyboard bands, I guess we'll go with that, because it's just hard to really define them. I guess I could just say that it's post-industrial too, whatever, right? So, we'll say, you know, post-industrial keyboard music, um, that works, because it's, yeah, it's hard to define. Um, there's a very special atmosphere here, it's uh, very sort of obscure and very uh, sort of hazy and foggy sounding and very medieval and sort of, I don't know, Victorian maybe sounding too? I don't know. Um, yeah, it, ha it has that sort of Middle Ages kind of vibe to it or whatever, I guess. Um, and um, also very notably, of course, too, is um, the fact that a lot of this music from the 90s has a distinctively 90s sound to it. And don't know how to ever really describe that I've wrote stuff like that on like Facebook and Instagram. I don't really know what that means or how to describe it, but I guess if you know, you know. Because like, I, when I listen to this, I, I'm not, I don't hear, like I can't think of anything modern that sounds exactly like this. That's why I say it sounds 90s, you know? So that's the best I can really say. Um, but this is a very good tape, um, a very good album. I like it quite a bit. I've played it several times, and uh, I mean, the fact that I got it for, I think, 10 euros, and then you know, obviously the shipping was free, um, is, is that fantastic, you know? So, there's a closer look at the front cover there. I should probably take that out. First, we'll uh, take a gander at the cassette tape, which is already, uh, well, it's not playing on my cassette player, because it's right here in my hand. That's the digital version you hear playing in the background, or I hope you at least subtly hear in the background. I don't know. There's the J card. It's got all the uh, lyrics and what have you. Um, uh, it also has a little spot there where you can see some of the other uh, uh, releases from Fluttering Dragon Records and uh, yeah. So, uh, Ildfrost went from 1992 up until, it would seem, about 2003. Um, the artist put out four albums, as well as a split with Umbra. So, uh, there's still a bit more I need to get from this project, and I really want to get it, because it's, it's all really good, I like it a lot, but... Just to reiterate again, if you're into any sort of, sort of obscure synth music from the 90s, Dark Ambient, Dark Wave, Dungeon Synth, Neoclassical, you're probably gonna dig this, so yeah, check it out. All right, you're still here, wonderful. So, <laughs> continuing on, let's talk about Serene Moments, a uh, double seven inch record which features music from Noct, North Haunt, Shinjuku Thief, and Umbra. So, uh, this was so this was so cool that this was still available um, from Fluttering Dragon Records, because I had been, this had been in my uh, Discogs wish list for a couple of years ago, I just never pulled the plug and just, you know, bought it from someone. 
And my, my main reason for wanting to get this was because it has uh, an exclusive North Holland track, as well as two songs from Noct. And you're gonna say to yourself, who is Noct? Well, Noct, or Tanya Stene, was half of the uh, dark ambient project Aghast. Um, after Andrea and Noct split up, Noct went on to Noct. Andrea obviously went on to Hagalaz Rune Dance and you know, all of her stuff she did all through, throughout the years until uh, she was unfortunately murdered. Um, yeah, uh, still pains me to have to think about that, sorry. Um, so yeah, I, I was and I, I, I was obviously very familiar with Aghast for many years, but I had never heard Noct before. And Noct only put out five songs, it looks like, as far as I can tell, unless Discogs missed something. Five songs, um, and they all appeared in compilations. I don't, I'm not sure why she was never able to put together a full album, or if she's doing music at all since then, I don't know. But all the music she released was between 1997 2003, and then presumably she went on to a normal life, had babies, got married, or it's a horrible office job, she it's not. No one knows. Or maybe someone does know, she just doesn't want anyone to know. I don't know. But, Knox's <laughs> uh, Nox, uh, mus music is pretty reminiscent of what her and Andrea did with with uh, Aghast. Although, it just doesn't quite have the same overall dark, witchy atmosphere. I mean, it's definitely it's definitely still good. It's, it, both these songs are very good on this 7-inch record, these 7-inch records. But uh, it's just like that same ma overall magic that's on the gas debut, debut is just it's not entirely there. So that was a disappointment, but still very cool to finally hear some music from Noct. So then you have the uh, North Haunt track, which, um, as far as I can tell, is misspelled here. It's misspelled Dying Day, which I'm assuming was supposed to be Dying Day. And then it's Dying Day, we gather around the fire. Um, so yeah, this is a, an exclusive track. Um, and it's a very good one. It's, it's, it's very reminiscent of what North Haunt was doing in the early days. Um, and it's, it's fantastic. It has... Um, you know, it's that really, um, how would you describe North on sort of that glacial ambient kind of feel to it, and I mean, I mean, you know, it's, knows me, knows that I love North Holland, and, um, so yeah, this was, that, I mean, it was a no-brainer to eventually get this in my collection to hear the song, so, it, it, it is great, um, uh, yeah, it's a great song. So then you have two tracks from Shinjuku Thief. Um, Shinjuku Thief is an Australian, or is it New Zealand? Well, somewhere down under anyway. Um, uh, a solo project that makes music very much in a neoclassical or martial industrial style. And the two songs here are just uh, two triumphant anthems. Uh, funny enough, the songs are called Anthem 1 and 2. And uh, they're fantastic. They're fucking great. I mean, you got the typically just really bombastic synthesizers, uh, you know, playing neoclassical esque music, and you know the military drumming and stuff like that. It's it's great. I uh, many years ago, I or I still I should say I don't have it. I do still have it. I have a Shinjuku Thief album, but I have not listened to it in many years. So I definitely need to pull it out again because it's a really good album. But uh, I want to say it's called uh, something about a scribbler. I don't know. Again, poor research on my behalf before this video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the great album. I, I, I know I, I got that album like 20 years ago, and I just I don't know why I never bought more from uh, Shinjuku Thief, but really fantastic stuff. And then the final song comes from a project called Umbra, which is uh, again a Polish, I guess, experimental kind of music project. I guess we'll go with that, yeah. Um, it has this sort of weird sample, and then it kind of goes into this more industrial, ambient kind of thing. It's not bad. It's not terrible, though. So, But yeah, I definitely want to hear more from Umbra. Uh, interesting, but I don't really know how to describe it. <laughs> so there is the front cover of this 7-inch record. And I will say that I'm uh, not always a huge just fan of 7-inch records for the simple fact that, you know, there's only a little bit of music on each side, then you gotta get up out of your chair or seat or whatever and flip the record, but uh, 
to get on. That's the price you pay if you pay the price for a 7-inch record, no? Standard black vinyl. So, I don't know. I mean, they're... I, I have memories of playing 7-inch uh, records when I was a kid back in the 80s and all that. So, you know, it's... It's cool, I guess, to have a few of them. I actually, I legitimately only like own like, I think like 10 7 inch records, so. And then sometimes I'll buy a bunch of them and then I'm just like, oh man, I should start collecting 7 inch records and then I'm just like, do I really need to collect 7 inch records? I don't know. All right, onwards, and honestly, the real true reason why I made the order with Flutter and Dragon Records. Um, the first new release with the uh, rebirth of Fluttering Dragon Records was the uh, official re-release of Hexmire's debut album, uh, Ode Vesser, if I'm saying it right, which I suspect I am not. <laughs> um, Hexmire is a, another project from Thomas Ostergaards, from the project Ostergaards. Um, and if you don't know his main project, it's of course highly recommended. I put a very elaborate video out back in, I don't know, December 2020, we'll say. I might be right, I might be wrong, we'll see. But it was a couple of years ago, the, the music he's put out with that project is very good, highly recommended. Just gritty, dark, dystopian, dark ambient music. But uh, here with Hexmeyer, he offers up more of a... Uh, I guess more of a death industrial, dark ambient style, but um, I guess as far as like reference points are concerned, you could probably compare this to something like In Slaughter Natives, Brighter Death Now, um, definitely a lot of the, the, the classic cold meat industry and just classic 90s. Uh, you know, death industrial, power electronics, and other obscure electronic music really comes to mind here. Um, which is awesome because I feel like uh, with both of his projects, Thomas has really just kind of nailed that old school sound while also, you know, throwing his own personal touch to the music, which is great, of course. You know, uh, um, there's a lot of music projects out there these days in various genres that just wish to you know, totally emulate another artist, you know what I'm saying? But like, you really should never do that. You should, you can take an influence, you can take a certain amount of it, like you could take 50% of an influence, but then put like another influence or your own personal influences to create something original. And that's what I feel like he's done with Hexmeyer. Like I can hear those classic 90s uh, death industrial bands here, but then there's also these other little subtleties that are like, okay, I'm not really, immediately ed identifying like I'm not like sitting here listening to them and thinking like oh that's this artist or that artist no I'm I'm sitting here thinking like this is this is pretty cool this is pretty original sound and he's definitely captured his own unique sound which is um, important and should be a main focus for every artist that creates music um, I think so anyway so uh, originally this was put on 2000 or this was not put on 2000 this was put on 2024 the original album was put on in uh, um, 2020, um, digitally, originally, um, I, uh, I bought it as soon as he put it on Bandcamp, I was fucking blown away by it, and, uh, so fucking blown away by it, but, by it, that it's actually, uh, uh, influenced some of the, the, new, the newer music coming out for my project, Sonic Oscillation, so, um, thank you, Thomas, for that influence, I bet you didn't think that was gonna happen, did you? <laughs> but, uh, it was a big influence for me, and it really kind of, uh, sent me down that death industrial rabbit hole back then and then uh, as you guys know like a year ago or something I put out that death industrial video on this channel which is still getting views and that's cool so uh, anyway yeah I mean uh, there is some more experimental characteristics on this as well and I, I hate using the word experimental but I don't really know how else to describe it um, and just some more obscure kind of influences that I'm not really immediately uh, identifying. I really like the, the vocals too, these sort of raspy, distorted, processed vocals that just sound fucking cool as hell. And yeah, man, it's, it's the fucking shit, man. And just this really sort of uh, dark, apocalyptic kind of atmosphere to it. Um, yeah, man, it's it's intense stuff. I mean, it's not overly abrasive, or it's not gonna, you know, hurt your ears or whatever like that. But it, it's 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 very good death industrial. 
So, um, the the official uh, re-release here uh, comes in this nice uh, slipcase, jewel case, um, or, I'm sorry, digipack. Comes in a digipack. <laughs> Um, oh, I should also mention that after the digital release was initially put out, um, some months later a self-release cassette was put out, and I had really wanted to get one back then, but, you know, um, shipping to Sweden was really expensive, so I was not able to do so. So there is the slipcase, my copy uh, being number two, so that's pretty rad. Comes with a sticker. Yeah. I like the logo or the sigil, that's really cool. And then there's a patch. Are patches like a thing in the dark ambient scene? Like, have I been like overlooking something here? Should I have like, should I have made Noctilukin patches like 10 years ago? Or how many years have I been doing this? Nine years almost? Should I have done that years ago? I don't know. If anyone wants a Noctilukin patch, let me know. <laughs> and then there's the front cover. So. Very desolate, just sort of a wasteland. Very cool. All the lyrics are in Swedish, but I guess thematically it's largely about um, just uh, the about deforestation and just you know uh, just the sort of like industrialized uh, nature that I guess you know all the that, that humans seem to have. Uh, they just want to conquer nature and just pave everything over and just. Uh, destroy mother nature and it's just terrible and you know I'm not gonna go on a big rant about how you should be a tree hugger and you know but you know we need trees and we really uh, we should really stop cutting down green spaces that's my uh, that's all I'll say for today so uh, everything you know I, although the lyrics are in Swedish I I fully agree with the concept that you know uh, we need to keep a, we need to keep trees keep forests and uh, we need to have less children and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Here's to the apocalypse and dystopian times and futures. And, uh, yeah, just, yeah, listen to Hexmeyer. This is awesome, man. So my Fluttering Dragon order also came with some goodies, which was very exciting for me. Um, the first thing I got was this, uh, I guess, newsletter. Um, when I first pulled this out of the package, I was like, is this just a booklet or something? And then I was like, nope, it is a newsletter. So. How freaking cool is that, man? Like, back in the 90s, I think it was always a common thing where, like, labels would stuff ads and all that kind of stuff, and they probably had newsletters, but I'm thinking it was more it was just a, like, you know, uh, a cut and paste kind of thing or, uh, you know, a, a, a printer copy kind of thing. Nothing this elaborate or whatever, so this, this was really cool. So, uh, it essentially has news on the label. Um, I don't know this was from exactly it's probably actually from the early 2000s to be fair but there you can see the first page of it just news and what the label's up to then there's some stuff on one of the artists umbra which i've mentioned numerous times at this point um and then we have a uh, interview with puissance which is i mean you know obviously one of the best martial industrial projects ever i i love the fact that like uh they have like this, this. They have such a, a hatred towards humanity and just this this very black metal attitude in all their their interviews and yeah, it's it's cool if not also <laughs> somewhat amusing, but it's it, it's cool. And then uh, there's the um, interview with the project. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's Polish, but I uh, I I don't. Yeah, you pronounce it if you can. Um, and then Ontario Blue, which is actually a project that uh, Devin from uh, Deviant mentioned to me a couple of years ago, and I picked up their first album. I really liked it. I mentioned it in one of my old videos, I think. I don't know. Uh, and then there's a continuation of the Ontario Blue interview. Then there's, you know, more upcoming releases kind of stuff. Um, very cool. Um, obviously, I wish I would have gotten some of all this stuff back in the day would have loved to gotten all those old puissance uh, cds and t-shirts and what have you but i don't know i guess i was doing something not nearly as cool well so yeah <laughs> and then there's another little uh, catalog here um this one looks to have been specifically just for the polish market because everything's in polish which is fine so this is cool though um 
nice big catalog. I, I know, I, I love artifacts like this from the 90s. Oh, you know, it's, this is from 2002, so yeah. But yeah, very cool. Um, just, I don't know, I love stuff like this. So if anyone ever has junk like this, or not junk, but if you have something like this and you'll want it, send it to me, please. <laughs> All right, and then last but not least, I got a uh, cassette compilation, which uh, somewhat awkwardly does not come in a cassette packaging. <laughs> it's called uh, Gray Shadows of the Universe. And uh, when I first saw the artists on here, I was like, wow, there's a lot of artists on there I do not know at all. Um, the recognizable ones were MZ412, uh, Monty Kazaza. Daniel Mensch, Lustmord, and then Profane Grace. The rest are all very much a mystery to me, and that's awesome, because I love discovering old, obscure artists from uh, the 90s. This one being from 1999. So it also has tracks from the project called Die Wappen dies Tot, uh, Virus, Psycho Sysis, Arisable, Swartov, Valfor, what the hell is that say, Elhaz? Yeah, so a bunch of stuff I've never heard of, so, but it was a very cool compilation. Um, sort of a mix of like, death industrial, um, uh, dark ambient, uh, and some more sort of, I don't know, dark wave and, uh, I guess. I don't, know, I don't know, maybe dungeon synth sounding stuff, or but just melodic synth sounding stuff, I don't know. But a, a very cool compilation. In, in particular, the song that's playing in the back from the Soltoff. I like that one the best. It's sort of, uh, sort, yeah, as you can kind of hear, a sort of a boombastic uh, keyboard music kind of stuff, more of that stuff. Not too dissimilar from uh, the Ildfrost Ild stuff. So, uh, yeah, very cool stuff. So. That includes at least the uh, Fluttering Dragon Records part of this video. Alright, um, one more artist for this little uh, return video. Yeah, let's call it a return video, shall we? So, uh, the interesting question here, uh, I had not thought about this artist in many years, and uh, oddly enough, back in the early 2000s, I had owned a couple albums from this artist, but I, uh, <laughs> I didn't understand it back then. Uh, I don't think I understand it now either, but my palette has uh, expanded, so yeah. So, um, back in December of last year, um, the Spookatorium, uh, which is a podcast I believe I've mentioned before, um, it's the podcast from uh, Scott from Grunt Splatter, he plays a lot of cool music and has like historical facts and shit like that intermingled, it's really cool, I love it, I listen to every single episode. Um, and he mentioned an artist known as Dissecting Table. Um, Dissecting Table is a long-running Japanese noise project. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I'm doing that in a little while. But uh, it's a long-running project from a man whose name is Ichiro Suji. And he has been releasing music since 1987 and has been extraordinarily prolific since then, putting out dozens and dozens upon of, uh, pons of albums and EPs and splits and... Who the fuck else knows what else? A lot of music, in any case. Um, he gets labeled as noise or maybe power electronics, but I think that's a shitty way to describe his music because there is quite simply no other artist on the planet that sounds like this guy. Um, yes, there are some very basic and normal noise characteristics to this guy's music. I, actually, I should probably explain that. I'm, I'm talking about the album uh, Power Out of Control from 2000. Um, um, from Dissecting Table. So, um, I should also mention that back in the early 2000s, um, Triumvirate Records sent me, like, two or three albums from this project, and yeah, it didn't make sense to me back then. So I sold them, completely forgot. Okay, we're up to date now. <laughs> so, um, yeah. How to describe this. So yeah, we got some noise going on here, but we also have these sort of, like, techno-ish beats? Techno? Is that what I'm hearing here? I don't know. Um, it's very strange. It's lots of in weird industrial characteristics, lots of harsh frequencies. Um, it's weird. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm like, this is music like when you're like having like a manic episode or something like that, or like when you've 
com like you're completely tripping your fucking balls on LSD or something or mushrooms. I, I don't really know, and you're like having a breakdown or something. It is so weird, but uh, strangely addictive. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Are you impressed that I described that so well? Yeah, I'm sure you are. So, um, this is, I mean, I can't even remember what the other albums I had in this project sounds like, but I remember them being a bit different. And I can't remember, but I may very well have owned this one back in the day, too. I don't really know. I found this for like four bucks, so I, whatever. Um, yeah, I... This is a terrible review. But what's going to happen is here, you're going to look up the section, the dissecting table, and you're going to be like, what the fuck is this? And we're, we're all just going to be scratching our heads together, but we're, we're going to be sitting there listening, thinking, I like this, but I don't know why I like this. So that was why I wanted to mention this. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. You're a wonderful human. Thank you for getting me into this shit. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, this uh, uh, was released by Triumvirate Records. Very minimal and, I don't know, kind of boring uh, uh, album uh, layout and graphics and all that, but that's fine. I mean, it's it's just crazy, insane music. Um, yeah, I, 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 some, a bunch of this stuff is on, like, Spotify and stuff like that, so I still need to take the time to really sit down and listen to a few other albums, but, uh, I don't know, man. I dig it. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for joining me for uh, here on the Inner Sanctum, the Knock to Look at channel. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, as mentioned at the start, um, I'm working on new music, going to be more releases on the label soon. And uh, other than that, uh, keep listening to weird music, keep being weird, be yourself, and uh, see you next time. Um, I do have more stuff I want to talk about, but I've only owned it for a brief period of time, or I just have listened to it enough. So hopefully, as I said, um, it'll be in the video soon. Soon could be two weeks. Soon might be two months. We'll see. All right.